when, when Jason talked to us after the game the other night, he mentioned he thought the, the O-line probably had its best game of the season. Would, when you watched the film, did that seem like the case? Yeah, I, I think all around we, we had our best game up front. And, you know, I think it showed, it showed production-wise. I, I think they're you know, gaining some confidence there. I think Earl Bostic put, a, put together another real good performance. I think Bryce Cable do is getting more, you know, for a young player as well as Michael Ford, you know, you got two freshmen playing over there that get better each and every week when they're seeing things and, and, and we need them too. And um, so we, uh, we, we keep progressing, but I, I, but I, I would have to agree with that. Are there specific areas where you see them really well, making progress? Or? You know, again, just mentally of understanding, I, I thought we protected better, I think there, but I, I think our physicality and things of in communication and, and some of the breakdowns were, were, you know, uh, decreased and, and, uh, but each and every week, well, we, we hope to keep taking more, more steps. Uh, I guess you guys are four games in now defensively are, are you maybe not where you were expecting to be at this point in the season or? I couldn't tell you what I was really expecting. There's so many unknowns, you know, it, it really is. And, and where we're at uh, versus that, uh, would, do I wish we were, we were playing better? Yes, I, I think we have flashes. I, I, correct me if I'm, I don't think I said it after the game, but did we have four third down stops in a row or something in the second quarter? something uh, of that nature where we're getting stops. Um, but right now, our third and fourth down, um, you know, percentages and conversions are, are on, you know, looking what we do versus our opponents are not anywhere close to where we want them or need them to be. Um, and also, our, you know, there's too many big plays altogether. And uh, we continue to, to, to work on that and, and, and get better. But uh, um, obviously, when you give up that many points, uh, you, uh, it's it's not where you want it to be at this time. Is there an area where you're most concerned defensively? Well, I, I again holistically of breakdowns and certain things. There's, um, I've I've said it all along. Is uh, I, I'd say if there's one, we we just we also need to tackle better. I, I think there, you know, we we can all point out the times where. Um, you know, somebody's cut loose and they're wide open and or something like that. It's but there's also the points of of physicality and tackling well and tackling fundamentally well and and uh, yards after contact and things like that. And and a lot of that comes with experience. It comes with strength. It comes with confidence to play downhill. It, it's confidence in the in the scheme that they're still learning and understanding to really let it loose. Um, but uh, you know, at the same time, I, there's certain individuals that, that continue to play well and play hard. And, and I'm not saying the guys aren't playing hard, so I should be careful how I say that. But there's some, there's a, you know, there's times on, <clears throat> on both sides of the ball where we'll have a big play and later on or something, the same look happens in a certain way and we don't play it the same way. And, uh, and then we get hurt by that. And uh, so, again, we've got to just be more consistent. And uh, I want to ask you about the third quarters. The last couple of games in particular, that's kind of been a big swing yeah. swing area in the game. Um, is, is there are there things you can do to kind of address, like, how you guys open second halves? Or what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I'm not really sure. I mean, yeah, you want to play better, obviously. What What is it? Are, you know, anybody could analyze uh, – you didn't make adjustments, they did, whatever. But bottom line, you know, we, you know, two weeks ago, we, we threw the ball a lot coming out the second half. Remember, we talked about that in the scores. And, and of course, we, they, they had like, the, the biggest thing is when we haven't, let, let me start here, is that when we haven't done something, they have quickly striked against us, the opponent, and scored. And then that everything that we've battled and built up starts to, that confidence subsides and, and we've got to maintain that. We've got to answer that. We've got to, we, we've gone into halftime in, in, in good positions and we got to maintain that confidence, but also then answer those things. Um, <clears throat> as I said, we, we came out Saturday and we ran the ball that we, you know, and we, we bust a big run and, but we end up with a field goal. So, you know, we had the answer and we had a chance to really gain big momentum and we did got little momentum and uh 
So, I mean, those are things you got. Yeah, I, was, I looked at it as well this week. Our, our third and fourth quarter scoring is not is not where it needs to be. And third quarter becomes the most concerning, of course, because we talk about wanting to get games into the fourth quarter. And then you go into confidence, youth, all the other things that could wear you down in the fourth quarter. Whereas if we get games there, um, I, I believe our guys are, you know, you know, as we grade film, I guess the other thing I should say is um, we're not battling effort issues. Okay. I've been in situations like this before as an assistant and whatever, and um, is changing culture, changing direction, all those things and expectations of what effort is um, has been um, on opposite ends, really. And, 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 and we don't have that right now. So that, that thing is, the, and that's part of the embracement that, that they've done that I'm very proud of. Now it's shoring some of these things up and, and answering things and, and, and being more consistent. And one of the things I alluded to about assignments and things um, was, was part of that on both sides, um, whether it be playing quarterback run or whether it be um, blocking most dangerous, you know, blocking assignments on the perimeter um little things like that that maybe aren't even noticed as well exactly who and what because some they've done it before so we continue to work to get better at that how would you evaluate how you all have done getting after the quarterback through four games defensively <sighs> not where i want it to be i think you know again uh, um yeah, a lot of factors go into getting after the, the quarterback, whether you just win in one on one battles um, or if you're going to bring pressure and you're bringing pressure, you're putting pressure on other guys as well if you don't get there. And that's part of our thing. And I, I think I, if there's one that I, I think we're, we're getting better at is our second level players are, are getting a little more confident in blitzing and blitz tracks and, and trying to get there. And that's um, those are things that. Uh, you know, we've got to continue to work on, but yeah, we, we've got to do a better job getting to the quarterback. And then when we're there, making the play. Is that, and you know, just learning a new system, it just, it's going to take, it's going to be harder to, to get some of that early so it might come on late or just when he was one on one battle. It kind of goes to the individual, but the, you know, probably playing in the defense does have some things and technique and, you know, and um, understanding that, especially in pressure situations. And um, those are hard to, simulate in practice because you're not going live and then to to have confidence and and staying disciplined in your blitz gap and pitchers change as they move and the ball snapped and a lot of different things and um you know i but i i anticipated getting better here as we as we move through the month of october did you you know ask about the the kick catch interference call in, in the third quarter is that something you asked about or, or did you let that oh, i asked about a lot as you know but uh, um you like that ben didn't you um yeah they uh they were trying to gather the information from everybody's view um you know what they look at it and um they didn't feel he was blocked into them and then hit and yeah that was a could have been a a huge momentum changer, but um, they were confident in what they saw. Uh, yeah, Lance, how, how well do you know Matt Campbell? Uh, decently, you know, uh, you know, we were one year together in the Mac. Um, we did not play them. So, uh, um, you know, we, He's a lot younger, so uh, but no, he's an excellent football coach. Uh, obviously, backgrounds of his time at Mount Union and everything, his his kind of steps to his success. I, I really admire him. I really do, and what he's done, what he's done at Iowa State. Um, you know, I, I I don't, you know, I think I said it through the early days of being here that you know that's a program that, you know, uh, as we go up there to. Uh, to, to battle an excellent football team, a top 10 team in the country, a team that people are talking about being in the playoffs this year and doing that is a huge measuring stick for us. Um, 
there's going to be a lot of other note taking as well of, of what, cause that that's a program that, uh, you know, our goals are to be like in, in time and, and do some things and that, that they've been able to do there. And that hasn't been, um, you know, I knew Dan McCarney, I was a grad assistant at Wisconsin when Dan McCarney got that job and still hear from Dan McCarney on a regular basis. And, uh, I know he's going to be at the game on, on Saturday as well. And, 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 you know, all the growing pains and Paul Rhodes and what he went through there and things like that. And um, so there, there's some things there, but Matt's an excellent coach. Uh, um, well, well respected and, and rightfully so in all facets of college football by his peers, by you uh, in the media and everything. And uh, he's, he does it and uh, he's really built himself a nice program there. Yeah, I asked you about the uh, seven yards per play after the game, but now that you've watched film, what did you see? What are some of the progressions you've seen from your offense? Well, again, we've I think we've become more confident. You know, we're taking a few more shots, but obviously we've we've found a few ways to use some of our weapons. And you know, I, you know, I think to me, when you think of it, you, you know, you, you see a really an outstanding play by Trevor Wilson making a catch, but you see us hitting an, an open Kwame Lasseter for a big play. We got to be able to try to generate more of those, as we said, for us to drive the field is, is very, you know, it's difficult for everybody in college football. Um, but for Devin Neal to break one like that to, is in the second half. Uh, and of course, Tory Lachlan is, showed his athleticism in burst once he had the ball in his hands. So, the nice thing is, um, and then of course, Jason Bean still does some of the things that he does with his feet. Um, what I've seen also is I just rattled off about four or five different people. And now it's not one dimensional. It's not one person we're putting this all on. And hopefully as we build this program and this offense, um, we're going to have different people to go to and utilize and, and build confidence. And, and then they feel confident about it. Again, it's may, may, some of the same things we talked about on the other side of the ball is, um, as you as you try to keep going through and you have successful things, it builds confidence and excitement, and hopefully our guys are going to build on that this week. Yeah, that's the last one for me. I just wanted to ask more about it. I think you kind of hinted at this, but talking about the third quarter stuff, are you still battling like the the kind of if something goes bad, the here we go again mentality? The, the you know, is that, um, that something that you, you fight at time? I don't. I didn't feel it as much this time. You know, is is because I think that you know the one play series. I don't know if everyone was three and out or like it was that other one, you know, sometimes you, you, you hit those. And um, the, again, what I thought, I hope you, you see it because you, you guys look at it, all of you look at it um, through a different lens than I do, but one that always also is evaluating and critiquing. And you've seen this program in the past. So my thing is that, even when the score was probably settled, there's like three minutes to go in the game and we're still driving. You see our guys with urgency and doing things and fighting and, and, and finding a way to try to score. Okay. We didn't do that. Had a touchdown call back and all those things, but those are the things that when I talk about our effort and where we're at, as far as confidence goes that we're going to keep playing. And that's what I like. Okay. So um, I don't know if I'm doing a great job answering it, but I, I look at, um, the interception, you hope he takes it to distance. It didn't go to distance. They take the, um, you know, the first drive of the second half, and hopefully you get touchdown, not a field goal. And then, then you take um, the uh, <clears throat> the touchdown call back late in the game. You're looking about, you know, what, 17 points or so. 18 points that we left probably 18 because we had to settle for one field goal. I mean, we're, we're lit now doesn't mean again, the, the moral victory thing, but then all of a sudden now we're, we're, you know, even 30 points for where we're at to be in the, in, in the mid 40 scoring and things like that. I, I think again, because we're talking a lot about our confidence and where we're going. So those are, those are things that we continue to, to address as well. And, and as we've, modified a few things in practice, not the major, but I, I see our guys responding to it. I think are going to help carry us in all these ways. Hi. So what are you doing? You mentioned that you want to tackle better. So what are you doing to help your team do that or kind of get the team ready for Iowa State? 
Yeah, when, you know, as we've said before in previous weeks, you know, getting better at tackling in the middle of the season or whatever in limited structure is is a, a balancing act, but it's worked on daily when we're in shoulder pads of tackling fundamentals, working on angles, working on getting off blocks, um, pursuit angles, anything that, that we can talk about uh, that, that we have to get better at. We have to use our hands better. We start every practice with, with hand placement drills on both sides of the ball, um, all those things. And, and we've tried to add in a few more and add maybe a second component. Um, we've, we've added more periods of, of wrapping up versus maybe just tagging off. But it's, a, again, when you get to this part of the season, you have to balance it and keeping your players as fresh and healthy as possible when you're when you're young, inexperienced, and not deep in some certain positions. Different players are, have been stepping up and, and making plays, whether it's injury or just opportunities. Can you just assess like Hayden Hatcher coming up with his first career fumble recovery and the opportunity that he had? Yeah, I think we talked about Hayden. Hayden after the first game of the year when he said he was we were going to get the job done against South Dakota late late in the game there. Um, yeah, um, unfortunately, I don't know everybody's if that's their first fumble recovery or not, and uh, um, don't dive into that a whole lot. But yeah, to see guys that are getting their first chances of success again, and it goes back to some of the other things and confidence, and you build you build upon those things, but. When you see guys like Hayden who play with such a high motor and try to make things happen, it, it's great to see because especially in that the, as our first level, uh, you know, our defensive tackles and ends. Um, yes, you need to be, you know, sound at the point of attack and strong in that. But um, I, I've I've thought for a long time if, if you keep playing hard and in, in those plays and keep keep alive when especially on pass plays, good things can happen. And you see it happen quite a bit. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Lance, when you watch Iowa State on film early, what are some of the things you see and what are some of the challenges maybe they present? Now you're going to make sure you get an opponent question in, John. Good job. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, it's just um, – um, yeah, an excellent football team. Didn't get off to the start they want. You look at every year they play Northern Iowa. I mean, that's – Northern Iowa's, uh, you know uh, – bowl game, so to speak, Super Bowl, whatever you want to say, Northern Iowa always gets up for that game and they know they know that. Uh, and then and then, of course, the the in-state rival game. And then, of course, um, you know, we, we saw firsthand how, you know, that Baylor's a much improved and and a, a physical, but yet uh, athletic team with a lot of speed. So um, you have a veteran team. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that I think I've said that almost every week, it seems. But, you know, when you look at the amount of seniors that we have, and then they have that many super seniors or whatever on one side of the ball, on the, you know, um, and really on both sides, you know, they, they've got as many as we have total. And uh, so you have a lot of players that kind of going back off the confidence things, highly successful, all conference, all American. Um, Played, won a lot of big games and a lot of big uh, uh, venues and and situations for them, and that's what's been able to 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 propel that program the way it is. You have a four-year starting quarterback, an All-American running back, two big tight ends that they motion and shift. They do a lot of things that make you adjust and think um, before the snap. Um, same thing defensively. Um, they do a great job fundamentally to to execute their scheme to try to contain you and do what they want you to do um, on a regular basis and uh, be a big challenge. And um, like I said earlier, one that that I'm I'm anxious for us to see uh, another uh, measuring stick of where we're at. And then one last one. I know this everybody's going to benefit from it, but maybe talk about it. You getting the extra scholarships that the NCAA is going to give with transfers and just maybe helping out, you know, as, as <laughs> this whole portal thing goes on. Yeah. I, I think as you, as we've looked at everything with, with the portal and the changing of, of rosters, I, I'm, I commend the people that are making those decisions because, you know, roster imbalance at positions, your scholarship counts, uh, trying to balance how you're going to continue to recruit high school players 
and and yet at the same time uh you know keep you know because of the the differences of calendars between signing dates and guys that can leave programs um i mean it's been four games and if you you see it every day we have somebody that's always looking and i tell you the last 72 hours have been the longest list in uh in a long time and um so that's going to help um you know, uh, as, as I know, you know, John, whatever, probably even better than myself, the, the scholarship numbers and dilemmas that we've gone through. I don't know if it's totally going to rectify it, but it's going to give some relief for us to address, you know, some of the things that 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 happened. So we'll see where it goes and hopefully it's it gets evaluated and adjusted in any way that it needs to. Hey, Coach, what did you make of Tory Lachlan's performance against Duke? At one point, he had two touches and two touchdowns. Probably needed more touches. Um, but, uh, no, he, he played well. Um, as you saw, it's a similar play we used against Coastal was the first touchdown. You know, uh, that one, unfortunately, was dropped. Uh, we, we put Tory in. Now we use him in that situation. You can see some of the things that, that he does do once, once he gets the ball in his hands. Um, as, as everyone knows, you know, he's a quarterback and a receiver, played a little running back also in there. And then, you know, about two days into camp, he moves back based on injuries and other things. And he's, and again, we're, we're continually finding ways to utilize him. He's still heavily involved in special teams. But uh, yeah, the, I like the percentage ratio, the touchdown ratio to touches. So we've got to make sure uh, we continue to, to find ways to use him and, you know, use him and Devin. Um, him and Amari on the field at the same time as well. What can be some of those interesting ways uh, to get him the ball? Well, if I told you, then it wouldn't be like, you, you know, I kind of want to use those to our advantage. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything really highly secret, though. I mean, we just got to find the runs that are most conducive to him. I think it goes back to one of the earlier questions about the play of our offensive line and confidence and – and um, you know, um, you know, part of that confidence is getting getting our backs to run confidently, making a decision, and running, you know, running north and south, and not as much lateral as maybe we did early, and that that becomes with uncertainty and cloudiness of of, of where where an opening is, and sometimes you got to make your own openings, and and I think our guys are doing a better job of that. And last one from me: Do you have a good Tory Lachlan story that maybe shows what type of guy he is? Oh, geez, I don't know if I've been around long enough to have a good story about him. I, 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 I look at Brian Haney because he knows how boring I am. So a good story for me is like, uh, I just, I, a, good, a good story from a head coach's perspective is a young man who will do anything that's asked of him to help the football team. And, and he's never batted an eye about, oh, now you're going to go to this room or we're going to use you in this role. I, I think that's, that's one. Um, if you're writing something on them, maybe maybe uh, have our communication staff uh, get you with Matt Gildersleeve. From, you know, is with them a lot more hours during the summer. Maybe maybe have a better one for you. But uh, you know, he's he's a he's a quiet guy, team guy. You know, those are you know so athletic and and you know he's got a great frame. He's got strength, and to me. Uh, you can't have enough of those guys in your program. And, and the, and the great thing, I guess I'll just add this as I'm not really answering the, the first question is um, sometimes, you know, you, you take a guys that, that, and we have a few in our program. I inherited a, quite a few in the last program, you know, you, you take the quarterback, the you know, quarterback could be the best athlete on a high school team. And sometimes you want to take them and you convert them. Well, a lot of times when you ask them to, to make the conversion to, running back, receiver, defensive back, outside linebacker, tight end, defensive end, whatever that may be, a lot of times it doesn't work because it's, it, it's, it's, it's a different game to him. And uh, the thing I really like about Tory is that he's, he's really taken this, this, uh, this role that, that's developing for him, and he's embracing it, and he's getting better at it each and every day. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.